Hi, everyone. Someone acknowledged that they didn't have enough pilots for this holiday season. What did you think when you heard that? Um, this is something that I wasn't surprised at. Um, I knew that Sunwing didn't have enough slack uh, when I asked why what happened had happened. So this is something that I had heard from Sunwing and from my officials. Um, this exposes the, I think, the unfortunate bad decisions that Sunwing made with their operations, given that they didn't have enough resources to manage the scheduled uh, that, the schedule that they had. Look, I think these type of committee hearings are important for Canadians. It's important to provide answers and information to Canadians. Unfortunately, sometimes the committee uh, partisanship can da dominate or over uh, gets more priority than providing uh, fulsome answers uh, for Canadians. I'm going to try my best today to answer frankly and candidly, but the reality is that the overall system is highly interconnected and depends on many of its components. Uh, this is something that became clear uh, last summer. Um, so this time, this time, what happened this Christmas was different than what happened last summer. Uh, it's clear the, that Sunwing accepted responsibility for uh, the bad de decisions that they made and that the extreme weather events have had an impact on, on the airline sector. Well, Regardless of what happened in the summer or Christmas, we've got a busy travel season coming up for uh, spring break and March break. What is your government going to do between now and then to ensure this doesn't happen again? Uh, look, Glenn, from the summer where it was a recovery from COVID um, and we saw that the entire system was stress tested and had some failures, we didn't see that during this uh, winter rush. Why? because we were prepared as government agencies, as most stakeholders, uh, and that, that's, that's, that's come on. They were, people were on planes for a long No, 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 uh, Glenn, what are you gonna do Glenn, 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 don't, don't, break? but don't misconstrue what I'm saying. Florida or somewhere else in okay. Mexico, right. don't have the same experience. So the, uh, don't mis misconstrue what I'm saying. Of course, what had happened to passengers were unacceptable, and it was clearly caused by the extreme weather and bad decisions by uh, by a private company. Having said that, our uh, work is ongoing. I said to actually this committee last December, December 5th when I was here, we are working on few things to continue to strengthen the airline sector. One of them is improving the passenger bill of rights. Second, modernizing the security screening process. Third, information sharing between different stakeholders. Fourth, in empowering airports with additional um, uh, tools. Fifth, improving the efficiency of the Canadian Transportation Agency. So I've just given you a, a, a work plan that we, we've been working on Have and continue to work on. on uh, absolutely. And ultimately, we're going to keep our eye on the ball. We're going to keep ensuring that the airline sector, that the aviation sector remains focused on protecting passengers' rights. Um, so we will be there for Canadians. Are you the bad decision of the app? Uh, look, I think ultimately, again, what we saw this Christmas is not what we saw last summer. Uh, we saw a few days of interruptions across the entire sector, but we saw that the recovery was different from Air Canada and WestJet than what happened with Sunwing. Uh, that doesn't mean that there, wasn't, there weren't some uh, uh, failures, uh, but it was co comparatively much smaller than it was last summer. Um, and we will continue to work with airlines to ensure that they uphold their customers' rights. Are you going to expand the air passenger protection to airport uh, We are working on, figure, on, on identifying areas to strengthen the passenger bill of rights. It will revolve around three principles, clarification of rules, simplification of rules, and strengthening of rules. So that work is ongoing. I'm not able to preempt the outcome for it yet, but uh, that's our commitment to you Canadians. Know, the, the airline wants the airports to pay compensation. Is that something you're open to? Uh, look, I'm open to anything. Uh, I, I want to make sure that passengers are, uh, um, uh, are protected. Let me just be very clear. Airlines do not, are not required to compensate 
customers when it's a mistake that outside of their control. They're responsible for refunding, but they're not responsible for compensating. So it's not fully accurate when the airlines say they are responsible for compensating passenger when a mistake happens outside of their control. Having said that, I am looking at strengthening uh, governance rule for airports, for government agencies, and as well airlines. According to the conservatives, you didn't get on, like, through their questioning, you found out that you didn't get on the phone quickly enough with some of the airlines' execs and CEOs. How do you respond to that? You know, I think it was Sunwing, who was it? One of the airlines was saying that you didn't talk to them until, like, after the Christmas season or something like that. My office and Transport Canada has been in touch with all airlines and airports, that relevant airports who were impacted on every day, and via airline every day, from December 22nd every day, sometimes more than once a day. Uh, if you ask Sunwing what the minister's responsibility and feelings about what was happening, they would not be confused. Uh, the reason why uh, I ended up talking after some of the issues have been resolved is because um, I didn't want to duplicate resources Conversations were being had on my behalf through officials from my office and deputy minister and officials from Transport Canada. So there was no confusion about where the minister and the government of Canada's expectations from the airlines were. So, so airlines and airports have been talking to your office, but don't you think that as the minister you should have been more involved in the crisis? I have been involved on every day. I have been briefed every day uh, by my officials, by my office, uh, about what's happening. I've been given directions to uh, my officials. I was briefed actually before Christmas on multiple occasions. What are we doing? My, the question that I kept asking uh, Transport Canada's officials, how, what are we doing to make sure that we are ready for the Christmas season? So I've been daily involved in the decisions and in response to everything that uh, was happening during that period. Thank you very much. Thank you. What is the timeline on these improvements, changes? Because you talk about public consultation, that's usually a process, it requires regulations, gazetting, all that thing. This could take months and months and months before, it, even if you just do decide to make changes, before they, they come into force, right? Uh, look, uh, there's ongoing consultation, and as I said, uh, I'm waiting as well for the committee members to provide their input. Uh, my plan is to table the proposal this spring. Table in, into legislation or regulation? It depends. I, I, I suspect there will be some legislative changes required uh, based on the scope, and that's the plan. Is to t if there is a legislation required, will be this spring. Okay. So it's going to be maybe before the summer season before we come into force, right? If, if even then. I want it to happen as quickly as possible, but we got to make sure that we do it to the best of our ability. So uh, I really want to see it happen as quickly as I can. Where are you flying? Back to Mississauga. Really? Yeah. Which I actually don't know. <laughs> Thank you.